this is Ray Wilson from Music from Outer Space and I would like to talk to you a little bit about the MFOS multifunction module or the MFM. Uh, the multifunction module has several things in it that will be very useful for your synthesizer. It has a linear lag processor. As the voltage on the input changes, the output follows it ramping in a linear fashion. So uh, if you have a step up, you will get a linear ramp from that starting voltage to that uh, ending voltage. We have the lag that controls that ramp time. We have a range control. It's the course change in time. The long range can go up to uh, 30 seconds to go from one voltage to the other. In short, you can be as short as a millisecond to go from one voltage to the other. We have an input jack and, of course, an output jack. The RC curve lag processor has similar features. The only difference is you get an RC curve. Now we also have two DC voltage mixers. There are three inputs each. We have uh, two outputs, a normal output and an inverted output. So whatever you put into the inputs uh, comes out in the normal uh, way here. It follows the voltage. Whereas the inverted it does the opposite of whatever the voltage is coming in on the output. It's 180 degrees out of phase. The uh, out bias control changes the voltage level of uh, both of those outputs simultaneously, either going lower or going higher. Uh, lastly, we have this voltmeter, which has three ranges, uh, plus and minus 10 volts, plus and minus 1 volt, and plus and minus 5 volts. Uh, this input is uh, wired directly to this through jack so that as you're monitoring uh, the voltage, changing voltage of something, you can just connect to this in order to control a module. And you can then watch graphically the, the effect of the voltage on this meter and hear it on uh, the module that you're controlling. Here's just a bit of clarification. Uh, this is linear lag. So you can see as the voltage steps up, the output voltage follows, but it ramps from the lower voltage to the new voltage. If the voltage changes again, it ramps to that voltage, and when it gets there, it just stays put. If the voltage goes lower, it ramps on down to that voltage, and again, just stays put at the end. The RC lag, as you can see, you get the same type of uh, capacitive charging that you would normally expect with an R a resistor into a capacitor both on the charging sides and then on the discharging side whenever the voltage goes lower. Here's an example of linear lag. We have two oscillators, both of them being controlled by a keyboard voltage, but one of the outputs of the keyboard voltage is going through the linear lag processor. So as we play a note, we can hear that uh, the one note slides up and the other one just immediately attains it. Now, as you can see, the further apart the change is, the longer it takes. Okay. Now, if we turn that way down, There's hardly any. There's none. Uh, now, if we turn it all the way up, and again, we're in the short times. Okay, so that's about the range for the short uh, range. Now, let's turn that up to long and go down. As you can see, that's taking quite a bit longer. eventually attain that uh, target voltage, as you can see by the uh, two notes converging. Okay. Now whenever you're in long range, you're still going to get some lag time even when you uh, are in the least setting or the lowest setting. So just so you know that. Here's a demonstration of the RC curve lag. Again, they're short and uh, turned all the way down. Let's turn him about halfway up. As 
So there's a subtle difference between the two. And uh, we'll go to the long range now, and you'll see that uh, it's uh, quite a bit longer. And remember, with the RC curve, as it gets up to the top, it uh, starts to approach it more and more slowly, and that's why you get, and it's the same on the discharge, that's why you get the long time as it approaches the note. So uh, again, linear lag, RC, curve lag, uh, very cool functions to have for your synthesizer. So now let's uh, take a look at both the uh, DC voltage mixer and the voltmeter. This will help to kind of demonstrate both of them. Uh, what we have is we have a sine wave going into here uh, at a low frequency. And we have a ramp wave going into here at a much lower frequency. And uh, we're then taking the normal out, going over here to the uh, voltmeter, taking the output of that, and then controlling uh, an oscillator or modulating an oscillator with it. So let's first demonstrate the out bias controls. You see it just lifts up the, uh, the output. And we're set to the 5 volt range right now. So let's turn the uh, sign up somewhat until we get about 2 volts of uh, modulation. So there you see we've got, uh, and when I say 2 volts, it's 2 volts peak to peak. And you can see that uh, you can hear that as well as see it here on the uh, meter. Now we're going to mix in some slow ramp wave and we'll see the effect here on the meter. Okay, so you can see how the sine wave is now being mixed in with the ramp wave and uh, modulating the oscillator. Now if we go to the inverted, what will happen is, you see it's going up slowly and then jumping down. What it'll do is it'll go down slowly and then jump up. Okay, so that's how the DC voltage uh, mixer works. Uh, you can see that's how the uh, voltmeter works. And the voltmeter is quite useful whenever you're coming up with a patch and you, you, you want to see exactly uh, where's my modulation at, what, what, am I, uh, what am I applying here that sounds so cool. So I hope this helps you to see the usefulness of this module. Um, you can use it as I have uh, by mounting the LEDs right on the PC board and then mounting the PC board so that they come through the front of your panel. Or you can wire them to uh, LEDs separately if you like as well. So again, this is the MFOS multifunction module. You can find all of the plans and schematics for this on the Music from Outer Space website. Thank you.